In the last video, I finished my vector line art. And then I brought it into Photoshop and set it up so I could start coloring it. I'm going to show you that again, just so it's all in one video. So this is now, with your vector, how to start coloring it in Photoshop. What are we doing here? We are doing digital coloring. Color behind line art, right? And the first step is what's called flatting. So flatting is to take whatever continuous surface there is. So if it's a skin tone, if it's a hair color, if it's the, the backpack here with the big dog muzzle, whatever it might be, finding a shape for it and filling that with one solid color of pixels. Once you've flatted, it's very easy to then choose what's called local flat color, the color you want it to be. So if I do this really professionally, I'm not going to tr try to use the right color right away. Instead, I'm going to try to use really diverse colors so that it's easy to select them later and swap them out for the colors I want. So. With these slides, I like to use these old formulations. This is like the most simple way you can mix cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink on 150 dots per inch onto newsprint and was standard for color printing from the 1930s to the 1970s and for comic books until the 1990s. Um, I'm going to take a screen grab of that and I'm going to use that as my flatting palette within Photoshop. So how do I set up my EPS file in Photoshop? I've got my EPS file here, but I don't want to open that in Photoshop. Instead, I want to go to Photoshop and say new file or file new. And I want to make that the size of a poster, 16 inches wide, 20 inches tall in inches, not pixels. By our lab resolution, a little bit higher than standard print resolution, so 350. I want RGB color mode, and I want the white background, so I get this, 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch. Then I take my EPS, and I drag and drop it in, just like we did with our compositing project. I hit return, and it shows as a smart object, which means if I try to paint it, whoops, that's weird. Is this a new change to Photoshop? It is. They keep changing it. So now, instead of giving me an error when I try to paint on top of it, it just creates a new layer <laughs> on top of it. But all of that's annoying, so I'm going to lock it because I don't want to mess with this. I want to leave it as a smart object, which means it will always be at full resolution, no matter what size, because it's based on a vector. My background, I want to leave my background as white, but I'm going to double-click it and rename it blank white. Or you know what? I'll call it white bread, all in capitals. And that's my background, and I had to rename it in order to lock it. For whatever reason, you can't fully lock a background layer without renaming it. So I'm going to rename my line art as black bread. So what we have here are two locked layers that we're not going to change at all. But we're going to fill in the sandwich between this white bread and black bread. To do that, I create a new layer in between the two. And I start with flatting, if I'm doing it really professionally, which usually my students are too impatient to do. Okay, the next step that I really recommend is instead of trying to choose all your colors from this color selector, these millions of colors, I recommend you have inspiration. So what did I do? I made a screen grab of those flatting colors. So I'm going to use that as inspiration. I'm going to drag and drop that in, put it up into the corner. Right. And then I also have other inspiration I like, like this image. That's kind of a nice duotone finish of inspiration. I'm going to do a quick screen grab of that because that's a digitally colored image with all these different versions. Right. And I'm going to bring that into my folder and then into my image just put it off to the side here 
And then I have all the inspirations for this particular assignment. All of these, right? So I might do a screen grab of these, at least the colorful ones. And put those into my assignment. Doesn't matter if they're high resolution or not. By bringing them into Photoshop, it allows you to steal those colors. Instead of choosing them from the color selector, you can choose them from these. I'm going to take all of those, they come in as smart objects, and just merge them all together and just call this inspiration. But this is not my flat color, right? Instead, I make a new layer, I call it flatting, and this is where I'm going to be working. So think of flatting as the bare minimum you need for a digital coloring sandwich. So what's the simplest sandwich out there that I like? Grilled cheese. So flatting is cheese, right? And sometimes I get fancy. I use cheddar, I use uh, Havarti, I use Swiss, I use Parmesan, all together, all melted together, but it's all gonna be on one layer. So I'm gonna give it a cheese color. I'm gonna make this yellow. So on my flatting layer, I'm also gonna lock my inspiration so I don't accidentally color on that layer. Okay, flatting. So what is inspiration in the sandwich metaphor? Inspiration would be like, If I had a blueprint for the sandwich, so I knew where to put the cheese, that paper blueprint would go in between the bread so I can layer the cheese on top of it. Sometimes I have that for charcuterie boards. But when you finish, you don't serve it with the paper, right? You're going to remove that paper by the end. So this inspiration will disappear by the end. Okay, so for flatting, what do I do? All I need to do is fill it with crazy color, just like these slides, right? crazy color but each section needs to have its own color so I click on my black bread layer and I use my magic wand with contiguous and then I select things that are far apart from each other holding down shift I don't want them to be touching these are things that are far apart from each other so if I turn off the eyeball, I can see what I just selected, all those different areas. Now, if I try to fill them, I could say edit fill with a color, but that's really annoying and it won't let me do that on this locked layer. Or I can use my paint bucket. And this is the first time we're using the paint bucket. Paint bucket is underneath the gradient tool. So don't get fancy yet. Don't start using gradients yet. Just do flat flats. So I'm gonna use the paint bucket and what I'm going to do with the paint bucket is you'll see that it, it gives me a can't do it because I'm still on my black bread layer. I click on my flatting layer and now I hold down option. Option will change my tool no matter what tool I'm using in Photoshop. It will change it to the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool is how you can steal color. And I'm going to pick a really crazy color, hot pink. So. I hold down option and while I'm holding it down, I click on hot pink. And now I just drop it in to my selection and it will fill all those selections with that color. Then I hit command D to deselect. And so that's what my cheese looks like on white bread. This is what my cheese looks like without white, white bread. And this is what my cheese looks like with on white bread with black bread on top of that. Okay. So, Go back to my black bread, go back to my magic wand, select other areas that might be touching the hot pink, but not touching each other. And some colorists like to use tons of different flatting colors. I try to, to not use that many. Okay, then I go to my flatting layer. Let's see what I just selected. I selected all these right? All these shapes. And now I'm going to, on my flatting layer, use the paint bucket, hold down option to steal a color. I'm going to do the opposite of hot pink, which is this kind of lime green, and I'm going to drop that in. And then hit command D to deselect. So what do I have so far? I have two types of cheese in these complicated shapes. 
filling up my line art. At this point, I need a little bit more guidance because that white bread is really strong. And I, I want to have a really beautiful inside of my sandwich. So I need to block out that white bread. So I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And then I'm going to fill that with middle gray. Why is that helpful? Because it shows me where I want white, I need to put it in. I need to color or fill in with white or a lighter color. I tend to never flat with solid white. I'll always use like a cream or an off-white. So let's do that next. What things do I want to be lighter? It doesn't even matter because I can swap it in, out later. But I'm going to use my magic wand, click on my black bread layer, and I'm going to click on, let's see, this here. Maybe the back here, maybe the, the gears here and here. Maybe the metal here, here. Maybe the stripe here. Maybe the inside of the eyes here and the inside of the nostrils here. And let's say the top of the crest here. Now, as you're using the magic wand, it is selecting from the very tip of the magic wand, right? Because you have to be precise. You don't want to accidentally click on the black lines or it will select those. Okay, now I go to my flatting layer. I go to my paint bucket. And this time I'm going to choose one of these kind of creamy whites. That sounds bad, but that's what they are. And then I drop it in. And now I've got three types of cheese. And you see how that helps? to have it on the gray rather than on the white so you can see what still needs to be filled in. Okay, let's keep going. No, it's actually interesting. If I go back, you see how my, for the first time, my paint bucket didn't fill in everything I selected. Why is that? It actually all makes perfect sense because if I'm on the flatting layer, all of these previous flatting colors are there. And so the ones that are already surrounded by another color, when I click up here, that's not going to fill in. So I have to also click on these ones that are individually surrounded in order to get them all filled in. But now I've got them all. So Command D, deselect. Now I just need to fill in the rest. So black bread, Magic wand, hold down shift. Let's get some dark flatting colors in there. Some of these shadows. All right. What color should I use? Hold down option. Going to use a bright blue and now i need to fill it in on each of them because these are all surrounded so just clicking it once is only going to work when there's nothing touching them okay that's all of them command d now this works because all of my shapes are nicely contained in my line art. If that is not the case for you, you have to do a little bit more work to get them contained. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's see. And if you do it this way, it's pretty much foolproof where you lock your, your black bread layer I'm going to use orange now, or this kind of salmon color, and I'm going to drop that in. And there are just a few areas I still need to fill. Go to my breakfast black bread layer, use the magic wand, and I was careful with my line art to make sure everything was contained, which can be kind of fussy and annoying, 